Hello, everyone. I will just stop the screen share, please, so I can say hi to you. So thanks very much, whichever part of the world you're in. This, the intent here is literally just to, as I said, provide some business county knowledge for anyone who's interested. The way I see it, if you're willing to spend your Saturday with about two hours of learning, I am willing to contribute my time and be able to help. So it's a collective uh, option. Uh, do please give us feedback. I think that's going to be very, very important. It's actually the first time we are running such a session. Uh, I'd really like to know whether or not this is a good experiment, uh, whether, you're not, whether or not you got value. So particularly keen to get your feedback. So please keep writing in the comment section. Um, I must admit that uh, it's going to be difficult for me to do too many things at the same time. So while I'm speaking, I'm not going to look at the comments much. I'm going to try to continue to just uh, make sure that I can stop periodically to get your comments and get your feedback and be able to clarify. Other than that, typically in a mass session like this, it's typically a bit of an issue uh, to be able to take one-to-one -one questions there and then. So I'll try to keep pausing, take some questions as best as I can. And I'm budgeting some time towards the end uh, to just be able to handle questions from everyone. So we'll give it our best. Uh, it is uh, a mass knowledge session. It is a free session. Um, so to that extent, uh, let's maybe just set expectations accordingly. But I hope it will be worth two hours of your time and worth two hours of my time. So thanks very much. So with that, uh, welcome to the course, uh, Learn Business Country from BNP BCM Experts. I've been doing this for many, many years. I started off as the BCM head for American Express in its financial center uh, in India. And uh, per my understanding at that time, the Amex financial center used to be making about 70% of the global balance sheet was prepared in India. So you can understand why it was a priority operation which needed business continuity. Uh, that's where I cut my teeth in BCM did the CBC CP course from DRI in Singapore, have been practicing BCM since, and it's been a pretty long journey. I would say covered over easily 10,000 plus people in, in various shapes and forms. But anyhow, let's quickly get on with the session. Overview. Ultimately, what we will do in this is really cover all stages of the life cycle. Essentially, that's the key idea of the whole process. About six sessions slotted for the six stages approximately two hours per session. So we look to keep today's session certainly two hours. The next session, which is next week, about one week from now, has lesser content. Embedding doesn't actually have two hours content. We may slightly take the next module a little bit into that and understanding the organization session three actually has a lot of content. That's where we do the BI and the risk assessment. So uh, in that sense, we'll try and see whether we can move some stuff up. So approximately 12, 12 hours of content, that's the intention. Now let's quickly move forward. Six stages of the life cycle, understanding the BCM life cycle. And I've purposely chosen this approach. The very simple reason to me, this actually makes it very simple to understand. Now, uh, I was one of the first people who actually started assessing business continuity when the BS2599 came out. That was way back in 2007. So it's been a long journey since then. When a new standard comes, there's a concept of technical expert. The logic being that the people who are auditing and assessing are experts at assessing. Uh, they are not necessarily experts at uh, understanding the domain. So when a new standard comes, you have assessors who assess compliance. But importantly, you have someone who understands the standard and can help the assessment team understand and be sure that what is being suggested by the SSE uh, is sensible and will work. That's the job of a technical expert. So I was probably the first technical expert outside the UK at that point in time, involved in two of the top 10 assessments in the world, Citigroup and uh, uh, Accenture. But then that standard got replaced by the, 25, by, by the 22301 and this diagram disappeared. And uh, the 22301, many of you are familiar and I'll show you the clauses also shortly. Uh, uses a very different approach where it looks at the building blocks. So actually this depth of understanding disappears or I wouldn't say disappears. Maybe it's not all that clear. One has to strive to find it somewhat. So I prefer to use this diagram. And at least if there's nothing you take away from today, if you can take away these six stages, at least I would say that's still 
uh, time worth spent for me and for you. Stage one, program management. That's what we are going to spend time on today, setting up the program. And I liken this to a chef starting to prepare for a big event. And uh, he doesn't just, I mean, supposing there's, there's a big marriage reception or there's an anniversary or something like that. It's not that, uh, and, and let's say the anniversary is one month from today. So about the 19th of March, let's say. It's not that the chef wakes up on the 19th morning and miraculously everything goes well. It involves a lot of planning, a lot of readiness, a lot of uh, allocation of roles and responsibilities. Who's going to do what? Keep ready the resources, uh, agree the menu, agree the theme. And that's just the chef. Think about the event planner. So the event planner is not just figuring out the food. You're figuring out the decor. You're figuring out the music, the guest list, who's sitting with whom, the layout, the buffet, a whole bunch of things to be done. So you don't just start off on that morning and get going. It involves a pretty major stage of planning and readiness. So I use that example perfectly for business continuity. You can't just jump into a program and expect that magically everything will start happening. It requires a lot of foresight, planning, roles and responsibilities resources, literally everything that you would need to do in, in planning a party, or uh, as I said, even the menu for that party, all of those activities uh, are perfectly mapped in business continuity program management. So that's why it's a critical stage. It's stage one. You don't get this stage right. You've got a lousy party. You've got a failed event. And that's what happens when you don't plan BCM program management well. You have a failed program. So pretty critical to have this as the first step. Now, let's say you've done this step well. Uh, you've uh, got something really good and solid in place. It works. Fantastic. Good, good position to be in. What next? Can you just start off and launch? And again, things will go perfectly as planned. Or is there a lot you need to do? Uh, I noticed 14 questions in the chat. Thanks so much. I hope they are questions and I'll deal with them a bit later. And a quick point to everyone that uh, sessions uh, two to six will actually be not advertised, but communicated to you via YouTube. And we'll go live and the link will come to you. So my request, uh, please do subscribe. Uh, everyone who's subscribed will get the link. If you're not subscribed, you actually won't get the link. So please do press the subscribe button. So at least we are sure that the information will come to you directly. Okay, back to, to the life cycle. So let's say you've got program management well under control. Great, good thing to be in, good starting point. Hopefully you will be successful. Do we just start rolling out the program and everything will get perfectly or do you need to give people some advance notice, some heads up, some understanding of what the way ahead is, some planning from their side. So you just tell them, oh, by the way, we need you three days today start for the BIA. If you did that, there's a good chance they won't turn up. They're already busy elsewhere. The boss will not release them. They don't know the background, the context. And yes, I mean, they may, some may turn up, some may not, but there's a good chance things will not be effective. You want, you want to achieve your objectives. So typically the next stage of program management is what's known as embedding. Embedding is really ensuring that everyone understands what's important, understands the key priorities, understands the need for this whole initiative, understands why, why we are spending time on BCM. Honestly, I would say in today's day and age, you can't beat me on the head and expect me to follow you with, with my heart. I may follow you in, on the face of it. I may pretend to follow you, but am I really doing my best? Probably not. Uh, just because you told me is not good enough. But if you do much more, if I'm convinced that this makes sense, then there's a good chance that I'm going to give it my best. So in embedding, we try and make sure that everyone understands why this is an important initiative, why they, they should spend their time. Now, I'm actually, for the sake of going forward, just going to shut off the video. I will periodically keep putting it on and also to save bandwidth a little bit. So I'll keep talking anyhow. Embedding, what do we do in embedding? We try and make sure that everyone understands why this is an important initiative, why uh, this, this is a good thing to do, why they must support it. Now, if I believe that this is good and important, there's a pretty good chance I'm going to give it my heart and soul. I'm going to do my very best. And uh, there's a good chance that if, if I'm not convinced. Um, so I would say a uh, next step is to make sure that everyone involved who has a role to play in the program understands why this is important. 
and if that penny drops in my mind then whether or not you tell me i'll still give it my full best attempts because i believe this is a good thing to do and i need to do it and if i'm not convinced i'm just going to do it as we call lip service uh, just to make you happy but not doing my best and then what's the point so critically it's embedding is taken as the next step so that everyone is is willing to to support it uh, and a question which we'll come to next in module 2 in detail is only people who have to play a role need to understand or people who don't have a role need to understand and my quick answer would be everyone even if you don't have a role to play still it's good for you to know that this is a good thing to do and it's good for you to appreciate why we are spending this time and effort because in the off chance that there is something to be done at least you are going to be mentally receptive otherwise if something needs to be done then you are going to need to be convinced before you are willing to spend time or understand the big picture so in embedding we try and make sure that not just those who have a role to play understand and and have full awareness and even those who do not have a role to play so it's a good next step to be sure that the environment is created and if the environment is created then there's a good chance everyone will support if i go back to the example of the party we are planning uh, yes party is being planned let everyone know that there's a party at least you are aware you 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 don't need to do anything for the party but you at least know a party is happening and therefore if that issue crops up and there is something to be to be done at least you know the background so embedding to pretty critical let everyone know be aware and importantly i would also say budget the time so if i need you so let's say we spoke say 18th of march this party is happening for the sake of argument using using a different example do i need you okay let's assume i need you from 10 to 12 so you should have in your diary now itself that i need you from 10 to 12 on the 12th on the 18th of march as the case may be so in embedding good to understand this is important good to understand that you need to play a role good to understand what your role is that you'll need to play and good to understand when you need to play that role so at least you can get it into your diary plan around it what should not happen is is i need you for the project and you're not available because you're committed elsewhere now that's not great so let's what we try and do in embedding next understanding the organization now i'll go a bit fast because we'll cover all of these in detail later but understanding the organization this is where we do those famous steps the bi and the risk assessment i think most of you who no bcm would have heard about those steps before times they are called the heart of business continuity so that's done in understanding the organization and the simple point is is you need to understand what is good bcm for that organization sometimes i use an example with my when i when i do my training or my consulting and i say let's let's say i've done bcm for a bank before and i have we've done we've implemented business continuity consulting for about 10 banks including i am a banker myself so can i say that i did bank x last month and now bank y will be exactly the same and therefore i don't need to understand what makes you tick as an organization honestly i can't each organization even if it's in the same industry will have their own prerogatives and i'll give you an example this is an example i often quote so let's say let's take a retail bank now a retail bank by definition say the national bank the state bank most or most countries have the national bank it's it's the bank that the government promoted to actually embed banking across the organizations probably the largest is probably the oldest it has branches literally everywhere now i know one bank in india it has a great slogan that's why i'm quoting that otherwise i could quote any other bank from any other country but this bank has a slogan called banker to every indian now that's their goal they are saying each and every indian is my customer and if you know india there are a lot of us so that's their slogan take another bank in the same country which is say um, city i worked for city in the past it's an american bank now why did city open up in india about 100 years earlier i assume i wasn't there so i have not asked anyone but i assume city opened up because customers in america would say look we are dealing in india so we would like to deal with you in india so please open a branch there very fair request in which case what city's target segment it is city's tar- target segment is a uh, typically i uh, started off as a us corporate who has operations in india so i should deal with you on both sides very simple reasonable expectation 
and i suspect Uh, that's what happened because as many would know city is actually was a big retail bank in india but they're selling off retail in india and they're going back to saying we want to be a corporate bank only by and large and uh, back to the same philosophy a uh, stick to the knitting why did we set up we set up to service our global customers in india and that's what we should continue to do now will these two banks have exactly the same bcm no way one says i am retail each and every citizen in the country is my customer the other says no my home country uh, customers are the ones that i really want to service and let's throw a, a third variation here let's take a swiss bank what are swiss banks known for typically historically private banking a uh, wealth management a uh, secrecy so let's say uh, a swiss bank is operating in the same country would they have exactly the same initiatives prerogatives would their bcm need to be exactly the same no again their target segment is very different so just to expand this example uh, i have taken three examples from banking all of them i'm sure have different uh, different expectations different goals different targets different customers and almost certainly you need to go through step 3 understanding the organization otherwise there's no way uh, you will be able to do justice to what they need in the bcm so this is a pretty critical step we will in these 12 hours spend quite some time on this step and walk you through a bi and a risk assessment at the end of of stage 3 you you would really say yes i have a pretty good understanding of what the organization what's important to the organization i have an understanding of what could create a disruption for the organization and i have a pretty good understanding that if that disruption does happen then which product service activities need to be brought up and in what timeline so that's really the take away from step 3 let's say great i i have an understanding of what's needed but what next i mean let me package that into a solution let me look at potential solutions ideally let me look at multiple solutions and select the most appropriate solution so that's what we do in determine bcm strategy in fact the iso 22301 calls this strategies and solutions so strategy is kind of high level it's it's conceptual a uh, solutions are slightly more on the ground more operational more real more doable practical so at the end of step 4 you would say look i have agreed with my organization with management we are all on the same page of how we will restore our operations within the reasonable timelines and how will tr- we will try and prevent the disruptions from happening in the first place so uh, prevention is better than cure and at the end of stage 4 we are saying we have agreed what to do great it's good to agree what to do but things will not happen till you make them happen so stage 5 let's make sure that those things happen let's implement those solutions let implement our responses let's create our plans so at least if something goes wrong we know what to do we can ideally very quickly react to the incident and if we act react really fast maybe we don't need to implement business continuity maybe we pro- solve the problem there and then so for example if a fire breaks out we are super quick in our response we snuff off the fire literally almost instantly in a, in a few minutes maybe fantastic response the fire doesn't spread a uh, great i mean we have some disruption while we are dealing with the incident say about half an hour or an hour but after that uh, we can reasonably restart and we may have some assets that are damaged due to the fire and some shock and some trauma and some little bit of chaos to be managed but other than that there may not be a huge show stopper to restart so in stage 5 we try to do two things we try and ensure that we have good incident management so if an incident breaks out we can very quickly deal with it and manage with it and we try and have at least clarity on what's required from a recovery point of view so at least if we need to restart operations be able to restart them within timelines and therefore make sure that we don't take advantage of our stakeholders in terms of an uh, in i would say inappropriate downtime but uh, certainly we have some downtime but our attempt is to make sure that within reasonable timelines without stretching the patience of our of our ent- entities for whom we really care uh, we call them interested parties in the 22301 historically called stakeholders without taking advantage of the decency and the patience we restart in reasonable periods of time so they are certainly inconvenienced but that no they're not inconvenienced to an unreasonable extent and to that extent once it's done it's in the past and hopefully they even forget that it even happened and importantly they they don't hold it against us 
they figure forgive us hopefully they said we did a great job in responding and that's what business country is all about the things will go wrong but at least uh, we have an obligation to deal with them fast professionally in a manner where uh, we don't inconvenience the end user or our other stakeholders beyond a point and then uh, very quickly hopefully we can put the event behind us and move on as if nothing happened again but last it's great to build a response but how do we know that response will work so please exercise it practice it test it do it a few times maintain it ensure that it stays current it stays up to date and keep reviewing it what needs to be done and here i have actually added my different variants so when i advertise these six courses i've added the word improvement i do think that the word improvement should be part of the cycle mostly these words come from the bs2599 standard and i believe uh, i am allowed to use it because this standard is technically withdrawn it doesn't exist anymore therefore so i think it's kind of nothing wrong in using this diagram this, i think this diagram really very nicely embeds in people's minds and therefore my request to you if there's nothing else you take away at least take away these three six these six stages in your mind and that itself means that if someone asks you about business continuity uh, you're able to then in a very quick manner at least give them a very high level understanding of um, how the stages are broken up and what the key objective is great uh, i'm going to take a short uh, pause for now just quickly looking at the questions in case there's anything immediate to address if it's about the overall approach and if not then we'll jump into uh, today's agenda which is primarily stage 1 program management so just give me a sec please okay thank you so i think so far so good and no major comments that need answering at this point in time is the sense i have please do send in your comment as and when a question arises as i said best effort basis i'll try and handle it towards the end i'll periodically keep breaking so let's go into stage 1 now quickly i just want to show you a mapping of the six stages so on the left we have the six life cycle stages that i just spoke about by and large directly from the bs2599 in the center i have the six stages from the bci life cycle now what you will notice is they map perfectly in fact some wordings are also very much the same i think the bci has a nice very simple approach but sometimes the approach may not always make sense in terms of what you're trying to say policy program management uh, quite clear embedding yes i mean people who understand what embedding will will appreciate what's being done in stage 2 analysis kind of high level what are you analyzing what are the takeaways so but still a good short word so if you want to keep things short i think the bci has has a really good approach design what are you designing you're designing strategies and solutions implementing those solutions so creating plans Uh, which we call response typically and importantly validation that we are sure it will work so interesting this maps almost perfectly and as you notice i am using courseware developed by fqa fqa is a uk based entity uh, who provides management services education uh, and certification essentially so they don't provide courses themselves they are kind of the conscience keeper their partners provide courses somewhat like other entities somewhat like pcb or the bci etc and critically fqa manages the quality control so we are using fqa course material out here and uh, quite a few people actually have gone through the fqa course and being able to since it's perfectly mapped all six modules to the bci have actually used the fqa course and then attempted the cbci exam and done pretty well in fact i believe that uh, approximately more than 50% have passed with merit that's more than 85% more than 100 people have taken the program the cbci exam after the fqa course and uh, generally it seems they do quite well so if someone's interested separately other than this session today do write to my team and they can put you in touch how this maps to the iso 22301 is in the last clause so uh, as i mentioned um the iso 22301 takes an approach of actually looking at the building blocks so that's program management that's exactly what we do in program management what is required to build the program so the building blocks 4 to 7 clause 7.3 is awareness awareness is kind of similar to embedding in order to really uh, commit and support it with my heart and soul you need to make it clear to me why it's important so uh, certainly give me the awareness and the understanding 
and then i will say yes i i fully agree this is important and uh, you can rely on me i won't let you down if you need something from me i'll do my best so that's clause 7.3 clause 8 in uh, the iso 223 is is operation operation is certainly where we do the bi risk assessment but the full implementation of the life cycle is actually done in clause 8 from a 22301 point of view so that's uh, bi and ra practice 3 strategies and solutions practice 4 developing plans incident plans response plans practice 5 even crisis management plans and we may not delve into that too much here for now but that's again a variation uh, typically the senior management plan is the crisis management plan and uh, lastly once that's done clause 9 and 10 in the iso 22301 are actually performance management uh, putting in place the metrics monitoring maintaining and clause 10 really continues the improvement so that's how it maps so i think uh, the circle that we've used quite well maps to other methodologies certainly it would also map to the dri and practices in some shape and form we haven't done it here we could at some stage so i guess the point i'm really making is the way fqa has designed this course i think it's quite generic it provides the building blocks and depending on the house you are looking to build you can look at those six building blocks in any shape and form I'll again pause you for a moment in case there are any questions. So hit me on the chat with any questions if you like. I'll try and handle it, and then we'll jump into clause one, stage one, really. And also, if there's any feedback about what you've done so far, this is the first time we're running this course uh, as a live free session, total twelve hours uh, across all six modules. So we are experimenting. I can't say I'm confident that everything will go hundred percent well. Hopefully, it will. so if you have any feedback to give us now do so and i'll try the best to incorporate it so just give me a sec please while i check the chat line so gorov you have a question about the order of the bi <laughs> and the risk assessment great question uh, my only uh, comment to you is probably a million people have asked this before <laughs> but it's a very valid question uh, as a matter of principle i want to answer it now i will answer it in stressy but it's a que- great question hold your thought and i hope you'll be there on in when we actually cover it in the third step understanding the organization which will be about two weeks from now so neeraj again you're talking about stage 3 so if you don't mind again i'm going to ignore the question for now we'll deal with it in stage 3 any questions about the overview and the overall approach any questions about program management hit me now and otherwise we'll get more deeper into program management So Rajesh, thanks. Embedding. Let's come to it when we look at the next module. And therefore, I think no questions for now in terms of what we've covered. So let's keep going forward. Thank you. A bit of my background. Maybe this should have come earlier. Uh, but being doing BCM for a long time, written a book on BCM, writing another one at this point in time, and probably a third one. So I think during this year, I will have two more books on BCM out if all goes well. And uh, as an organization, that's the bread and butter of what we do. We are a multiple award winner awarded by the bci multiple times in the bci hall of fame in the uk and we are i would say largely middle east centric and in india uh, that's what we do but i'm going fast here because that's not the key objective of today the key objective is is not to publicize what we do but to actually cover the course itself so here we go so policy and program management again six aspects coming up by chance uh, the good thing is it's not that each module has six different uh, steps to remember but certainly module 1 does so what do we do in program management as we see here we put in place all the needed approvals and i'm saying organization nice to say yes the organization puts it in place but who's the one who makes it happen the poor bcm head so any of you who been bcm heads uh, know that uh, ultimately everything comes and rests with you sadly there's a customer of mine in uh, saudi and he jokes that uh, till we didn't have a bcm uh, department everyone did everything themselves now they, that we have a dedicated bcm unit and the saudi standard by by the central bank the sama minimum business continuity objectives which is i would say kind of at, at this point in time that's probably the major regulation on uh, business continuity in saudi so that's why i referred to it as saudi standard it's the best that they have for now and it's very good very detailed the saudi standard actually request every and it's it's for banks of course because it's by the central bank banks and insurance companies they actually request that there should be a dedicated department uh, for business continuity 
So this customer of mine jokes, he's the BCM head and he says, till we didn't have a BCM team, everyone did their own work. Now that we have a BCM team, even if a light bulb has to be replaced, they say, oh, disruption in light services, business continuity, please kind of come and do what you need to do. So I think that's on the lighter side, but uh, sadly, um, ultimately, everything comes and rests on the broad shoulders of the BCM head, uh, be it male or female. I hope you have broad shoulders because everyone comes and dumps this stuff on you, sadly. And uh, critically, we handle that in, in embedding uh, as to what we can do to actually make sure that the organization spreads the load and the organization makes sure that everyone should be following their role and responsibility. Because uh, it's really not fair to expect the BCM head to do any, every, every, everything for everyone. But critically, program management, the stage one, is the BCM head responsibility. Ideally, in the other stages, you should be coordinating. You should be looking at the control panel. Uh, someone else should step up to the table for whom it's a core responsibility. So it's teamwork. But I think in stage one, it's really the BCM head driving this along with the sponsor and getting approvals of the steering committee, etc. Uh, so the organization, I would say, where with the BCM head front-ending, gets, puts in place all the needed approvals. Whose approval do you need? Sometimes it's even a board decision. Sometimes, and, and again, the Saudi standard is a good example. They say that the board needs to manage the BCM program. In many organizations, the board just needs to know that the BCM program is in place. That's good enough. They don't really need the details. In many organizations, the board doesn't care. And I think less and less, uh, I think the pandemic made it might very, very clear why business continuity is important. In general, I can make a statement that those who had BCM reacted much faster, quicker, more effectively, more smoother, less chaos. And those who didn't, I would say struggled much more. Um, I'm, that's a generalization I'm making, but I'm making that generalization. So certainly it adds value. So at least in this stage, we try and make sure that whoever's approval is needed approves, understands, supports, has given their opinion, their suggestions. Those opinions and suggestions have been considered to the best of your ability. Uh, they've allocated the resources, not just lip service at a very high level. Yeah, yeah, we'll do this for you, but at a very detailed level. Sending out messages, nominating people. Um, I have a customer, one of our first consulting organizations for a manufacturing entity, was an electronics manufacturer of Japanese origin. They actually sent out uh, a formal uh, letter uh, to each of the coordinators. So they issued a formal letter in the name of the CEO. The CEO sent it out. There was a small ceremony. Those coordinators were called and handed over that formal letter signed by the CEO to say, you're one of our best. You're we think very highly of you. You have a great future with us. And uh, for this project, we've selected our best people and therefore we select you. So hope, hope, hope you recognize uh, the honor and hope you'll do your best for the project. So unfortunately, often in business continuity, uh, you get given the person who is free and who has bandwidth. And why is he free and bandwidth? That's because no one else wants him. Um, he's a troublemaker. He's, uh, he's kind of non-cooperative. Maybe he's not highly competent. Um, so often when it comes to that, who's free? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. Let's assign him to BCM. That's really because they don't understand the importance of the project. So when we do our consulting, we normally say, we need your best people. And we try and give them a profile of what makes a good business continuity coordinator. So that's an example of the approval you need. Uh, you don't just need, yes, we will nominate coordinators, but you actually need the organization to fully support that you will put your best people and your most knowledgeable people and the people who can do the best job on this project uh, by name. Um, so when the, once this phase is finished, stage one, all those people know that they've been assigned and all those people hopefully appreciate very soon why they've been assigned, uh, partly in this, but even more in embedding. So by the end of embedding, they hopefully have a really good understanding of what's expected. And they also are confirming their commitment and their, their desire and their willingness to fully play the role as, ex as expected. So by approvals, it's a much, much higher level, much, much more detailed level of, of approval where everyone is clear and therefore resources are fully in place. Those are the people resources. You may need uh, uh, physical space resources. You may want to sit together as a team. You may need skills. 
you may need someone uh, in the organization who has done that before so for example in one of my previous organizations when i was with uh, standard chartered standard chartered globally set up a new unit called cash management and uh, by chance they hired someone from city which was a leader in cash management to head up the cash management at standard chartered he looked across the organization and said has anyone done this before so i had and a few others had and therefore we were asked to join that unit because we had prior experience so even in your own organizations if you did a scan you may find someone who's done this before in some shape or form so good to pull them into the program because they have prior experience and understanding they're not starting from zero and that could be a good thing to do um so you'll need people resources facilities you need uh, others who uh, have to support it directly or indirectly uh, you may need money you need a budget probably uh, you may need some meeting some discussion some training some consulting um, later once the once you know what you need if your bcm is deficient you may need some infrastructure at some later stage so you can't budget for that now because you don't know what you need but uh, later you may actually uh, need much more so at least what you need at this stage is resources to be able to to conduct the program management not resources to put each and everything in place but resources to be able to be able to conduct the full exercise and as you conduct those steps you may need different resources which we will budget for later so you get full sanction from the organization to do that whoever is needed and then there are six key steps uh, establishing policy that's a good thing uh, as a first key step so sometimes uh, i started my business county journey with dr go in singapore so he's kind of my guru who taught me a lot of things and one thing he said is the first thing we do is establish a policy so uh, by means of a policy what you're really doing is you're telling everyone in the organization what you expect so that's a good first step and who issues the policy uh, typically again uh, it could be signed by the board many times it is sometimes the ceo sometimes the sponsor but the higher the level uh, the more the seriousness so if if your board is willing to attach their name uh, great and let, let me rephrase that statement whether your board is willing or not if you need the board to attach that their name to the statement and endorse it because you feel it will give you more seriousness then please feel free to ask the board has a right to push back but you have a right to ask and and if you believed in it strongly i'd say at least ask a second time maybe not a third fourth fifth sixth time you may get beaten up but uh, nothing wrong to say uh, at least a second time guys would you mind just rethinking this because i just think that if you as a board were willing to sign this or put your name on it or or send out the message in your name to everyone about the criticality then people will take it much seriously so that's a good first step to start with uh, creating a policy scope now actually when i started to put together this presentation i changed this kind of up and down so actually i i started with scope and then went into policy for the very simple reason that actually when you issue a policy and normally it even contains the scope so scope at least is is an element of the policy and the scope is very critical in terms of being able to know what you need so if i what do we mean by scope and of course we'd spend a bit more time on each one of these in a slightly more detail but what do we mean by scope the coverage and i used the example earlier of of a, the party so you're having a big party being organized one month from now what's the scope of it what does it cover are you inviting just your guests in and around the city are you inviting them from across the country are you inviting great friends who are overseas how large do you intend for the thing to be so these are important questions how much food is to be cooked maybe what uh, preferences need to be kept in mind uh, perhaps what's the weather what uh, woolens and clothing do they need is it a beach is it is it the hills and the mountains Uh, is it a destination event um, you need to know all of those to be clear on the next steps and importantly the budget and the timelines and what's required you may feel if it's a very big event one month is just too short perhaps you need more time so determining scope of the bcm program is very important as i said practically it's step a maybe even before you get into other things and that then helps you understand make sure that everyone's on the same page and therefore we all have the same context and vision in our mind and therefore anything that we are doing keeps in in mind the size and scale of the of the event 
and the particular players in the event so hopefully we can be much much more correct about the decisions that we take going along okay. governance great we have done this but do we just once everything's approved just meet the kind of team and who owns ultimately who's responsible for the bcm initiative management now that's what each and every standard will tell you that's the logical thing to do now what's defined by management that's a bit of a vague definition whose management is it just the ceo is it the board which which often includes the ceo is it a particular committee uh, often we may call it a steering committee whose management and and ultimately they need to be happy with what you built right so going back to the example of the party you do all of this and the boss is not happy maybe maybe it's an anniversary the two people whose anniversary it is they are not happy or their parents are not happy that they really care about i mean then what's the point we've done all of this effort and got it wrong such a waste so uh, who is management who's governing who needs to be happy who needs to approve the decisions who needs to be comfortable good to agree that to be very clear what's the process do we go to them for each and every small thing saying should i order yellow flowers or red flowers or should i offer 10 truck loads or one truck load or two do you go to them for each and every small thing or do you go to them only for the big decisions that's an important one so so governance uh, who should actually approve it and importantly when do you keep reviewing it with them um, when i speak to my team i say review maybe at 5% and 5% is kind of a pilot that if this went right then hopefully the rest will go right after 5 do you review next only at 100% or do you still review in between so maybe 5 20 35 50 60 80 in some ways perhaps the reviews get shorter because you've covered most of it the key decisions are taken uh but normally you would have a series of reviews it would not just be perhaps one meeting today and then one meeting literally the day of the event if something has gone wrong then literally you've run out of time you really can't change it you're stuck so good to establish the governance in a bcm project what frequencies do we agree who's involved we'll discuss that roles responsibilities and authorities very critical element who's empowered to sign off on what so again uh, do you go back to the big boss or the ceo or the board for each and every small thing saying do you like the cv do they need to get into that level of detail yet or should you pre process things and only involve them when they're uh, when it's at their level of of expertise and at their level of understanding literally this is the final short list two people we had 20 we didn't bother you with those 20 but these are the final two and why don't you take a look that's perhaps at the level where you would involve them um so agreeing those roles responses and, and authorities documentation critical now if you didn't document it then what you've done some great things but there's no record and memories fade over time so if i asked you today what you ate 10 days ago for dinner i doubt whether you remember i ask you what you ate today for lunch or breakfast or yesterday dinner i think there's a good chance you remember you still may not get it 100% correct actually but at least you have a chance um so documentation is critical to record decisions taken to record agreements to record commitments and timelines and critically as you start building a bcm documentation to actually put down on paper what the management wants and and has agreed and has signed off on and was must, must happen so we'll again come a bit later in this part to documentation but very critical to ensure that you put in place uh, a solid program it uh, is comprehensive it contains all the needed information and a good reason to define this up front because supposing you've done uh, and we'll come to this obviously in the bia supposing you finish your bia but actually in that you forgot to ask them their preferred timelines of resumption now this is critical without timelines actually your bcm program typically will not work because you need to know what is reasonable from the perspective of your interested parties so if we, if we did not define that in the documentation then honestly you will just have to rework and your project will fall behind extra time extra effort frustration what's the point so again very critical to define in advance what the documentation is going to be needed and what those elements are so that we can keep things fully on track 
and not have to uh, rework and literally do it right the first time i think that's again a good noble objective in general and importantly when bcm really kind of uh, looks at it and sometimes i use the example when i teach that at the end of the day yes we've done all of these things but supposing you never have an incident does it mean that the entire bcm preparation is is gone waste uh, probably not i think uh, pandemic made it quite clear that you will perhaps always need your bcm supposing you didn't where does bcm help you in my way bcm helps you do more with less so bcm is what is a bcm situation to me a business continuity situation is when some key resource is unavailable some key resource category is is hugely unavailable largely it's not just a, a minor blip uh, one person didn't come to office today one minor person who didn't have a major role to play it's that something is critically wrong the key people are not there we're stuck uh maybe if i use the example of the bank where i used to work typically the bank vault is operated or what you call on a dual control system there are two different people who have who both have to punch in their codes and keys at the same time and if they don't one of them is missing the vault can't open now if i'm a bank and both of those people were not there at the same time and the vault did not open i can't take out my cash i can't service my tellers other than maybe some emergency cash which i may have arranged um so particularly anyone who comes to the bank we may say sorry we don't have cash uh, please come later not a great situation to be in kind of when it comes to documentation per se uh, good to ensure that everything is defined everything will work and in advance itself we we we've, we've kept those things in mind so that we do it once and for all uh, at the right uh, time in a very organized manner and therefore when it comes to business country to me a uh, critical element is business country in my view helps you do more with less uh, something was majorly unavailable and we managed without that great fantastic but is there a learning there if i did this as a plan b then i should even see whether actually i should at some stage substitute my plan a and just keep my plan b maybe my plan b is a smarter way to do things maybe technology has evolved uh, there was a traditional method uh but when we start putting in place a business continuity we realize that there are better things to but better ways to do it so uh, it could well be that business continuity actually helps you improve your processes uh do more with less bring in more efficiency and remove non value add uh, perhaps the plan a was doing a lot of things which are not adding value a uh, plan b says we don't have the time and resources let's do what's important and guess what nothing critically got left out because many things being done were non critical anyhow so i think uh, bcm actually in a long term sense helps a lot and by creating the new documentation you i believe should maybe be able to also improve your basic processes and substitute traditional non value add uh, techniques and methods with even smarter ways of doing things so bcm could help you not just improve your plan b but put in place a better plan a uh, lastly great we've done we've taken a lot of decisions we've got a lot of sign offs and management supports are our desired way forward is that all we need no we need a project plan we need timelines we need milestones we need to block people's diaries we need to agree which day the steering committee will meet is it meeting every week or every month or once every 6 months how long will it be meeting ideally which day will it meet ideally what time that day it will meet is it a two hour meeting four hour meeting full day let's block the calendars now itself if you need to change it close to the date go ahead and change it but uh, try to in fact lock in things to as large a detail as possible because that's your best chance of success it's in the diaries no one can then say oh i didn't know sorry i'm not there oh, oh i'm there uh, i mean you were told four weeks ago uh, no excuses so stage f is actually then pretty much putting in place a project plan uh, getting that project plan approved knowing what is the start and end date of the various steps and milestones and the entire project and making sure this is communicated to everyone so that everyone gives it the needed priority everyone does what they're supposed to when they're supposed to do it and then your plan has a good chance of being on track so high level six stages i think the stages make sense i hope this is a logical flow and we'll then get into those six stages one by one but again i'm just going to pause in case is there any questions hit me on the chat line we've just crossed about an hour this could be a good time to take a logical break 
So I suggest just a five minute break. Let's restart in five minutes. And in about five minutes, I'm going to look at the chat questions and try and address some, if any. If anyone has a question, put it now itself before you take your break. And let's restart. And if there's any feedback about what we've done so far, anything to, to be done differently, anything not working, again, please let me know so we can course correct as we can. So thanks very much. I'll kind of put it on pause for now from my side. Take a quick break. We may play a small promo video during the break. Uh, the fact is when you see this live on YouTube, uh, the rest of the world keeps doing their own promo. And uh, normally when my session comes on board, there's someone else before me who comes and plays uh, their promo video. So we'll just do ours. But uh, we fully expect that you won't be looking at the screen. You're, you're enjoying your break and doing whatever you need to. But if anyone is there, we'll maybe just play a promo video possibly uh, while we do that. And see you in about seven minutes from now. Thank you. Welcome back. So restarting. So we did have some comments and I'll go through them. So Irfan, uh, online resources for uh, training, uh, we can speak later. As I said, uh, I don't want to confuse commercial with uh, non-commercial. This is purely non-commercial. It's done just to try and help out at this point in time. And particularly, I'd say the target audience for this is not seasoned BCM professional. I see many people on uh, this uh, session who could actually teach this course itself some very highly regarded BCM professionals, highly capable. The target audience for this that we've set up is actually for those people who need help. Someone who's looking at BCM as a career, someone who really wants to understand more, someone who, and to me, it's, it's more, um, it was my way of giving back. For example, something I really admired and liked is when ISO actually gave out the 2231 standard as free to read. Once the pandemic happened saying, guys, I mean, you need it. So go ahead and use it. But I think the thought came, let's, let's do what we can. Hussain, roles and responsibilities. Great. Good point. Yes. In governance, I'd say we agree the components and then actually we firm out those roles and responsibilities for each of those elements. So everyone should be told that this is your role. This is what you need to do. Yes. Hussain, you have commented on the policy. I, fair. I'll go ahead. I don't think that's a question. So I won't stop. Durgesh, thank you. So, so far, so good. Thanks very much. I appreciate it. Again, from Durgesh, financial impact of an outage. Great point. And actually the BI, we can do that. So we'll address that in the BI. In my view, in some industries, you can, in some industries, you can't. In telecom, in financial services, you can assess the final impact of an outage. Treasury, for example, a trading, you can easily. So let's, let's do it at the BI, but yes, you can. In some, you can't. Maybe you're a government department. Difficult, okay, but in some you can certainly. Rajesh, ROI on BCM implementation? A good question. Um, I'm not going to deal with it here uh, because we have a shortage of time. I want to cover those six points. And Suzanne, you had the same uh, point. It, it, it's a very valid point. Um, let's remember that uh, when we talk about program management, the fact is the program has started. Right? That means management is key. Management has passed the stage. So everything that we're discussing is when management has set up a BCM program. That means they're convinced. 
your question is very valid but that question actually comes up before the program starts so before you even get to these six stages of 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 implementing your program and having a bcm head appointed and a steering committee and all of those nice things and the board saying we want it very valid but all those discussions of roi etc i believe happened before that stage once you got to this stage it's taken that we are doing bcm um, so very valid question we can look at it later in review improvement we can maybe look at it little bit in bia possibly but i won't spend time on that discussion here in the interest of time i hope that's fair i'll take another look if there are any questions and otherwise we'll start i'll put off the video for now and we'll go straight to the voice okay so far so good thank you so moving to the slides now the six stages and i've covered these at least at a high level so let's start with the first one policy and we've covered already what's a program so program is the entire steps involved to put in place the initiative to implement bcm we call that a bcm program a project management i would say project management is doing it the first time uh, and typically the first time it's kind of monitored slightly differently so what is a project project typically is something that has a start date it has an end date um, it has a team that's been mobilized to implement the project and a good example is the is the creation of a standard that's project management so i mentioned that i was probably the first person outside the uk to be involved as a technical expert in uh, a bcm assessment that was the bs2599 this was early 2007 i believe and uh, the fifth audit in the world was accenture uh, for their india operations accenture covered about 35000 people as part of their scope for that certification uh, i of course uh, this is public knowledge i mean it's it's it is uh, the fact that accenture went through this i believe that's not uh, i obviously cannot talk about the details of the assignment the point i'm making is is that was a project so for example the first time we are going through a standard a new standard the first audit ever in india on business continuity 2599 and the fifth in the world so there's no body of knowledge we are all struggling to figure out what the standard says and the why so literally uh, in terms of bia how is a bia to be done how is a bia what's the right way there were three members in the team i was the technical expert and every day actually we'd have a slightly different opinion and a different interpretation we wrote to the to the body we said okay guys you created the standard and uh, please help us with our interpretation is it this or is it this they said we don't know the project team has disbanded i mean end of day who do we ask Uh, so that's an example of a project uh, the team came for a particular objective objective is create a business continuity standard they did it standard launched khalas uh, now you unwind you kind of go back to your jobs thank you very much uh, a program is different a program is ongoing so literally uh, for business continuity the first time you implement it it would be a project but once you've done it the first time assuming you need to do it periodically and in business continuity the general recommendation is at least annually so at least annually relook at everything relook at your policy relook at the bia the risk assessment the plans and almost kind of uh, rework them as they need so that this year onwards uh, they meet your objectives for the next 12 months they're not just supporting what you did last year they are supporting what you plan to do this year and in the future so that's a program so i think importantly what we're really saying is you may start as a project but every year the business continuity program should come along and that's an example i mean there are many things that organizations would do annually you do budgeting annually most of you you do maybe campus hiring annually if you have large intakes of numbers you do performance appraisals annually you do salary revisions annually uh, you set out your uh um, the the calendar leave dates for the year official leaves um which are going to be the dates for eid and ramadan many of those things happen annually similarly a program happens annually so that's that's a program uh done repeated on a regular basis and kept ref, uh, uh, intention being to refresh um uh, the future uh, what you're going to do in the next upcoming few months to make it effective that's why program might is important because it's looking at the upcoming future not the past what is a policy we covered that briefly just before we were breaking a policy is management statement of their expectations this is what we want 
a BCM policy would say, this is what we want in our BCM program. Uh, we want this, we want this. So if I were to just maybe do it verbally without looking at this stage at, at a formal document, uh, as a management team, I would say, we are committed to ensure that business continuity is implemented in the organization. I would also have to specify why I want business continuity to be implemented, not just saying it should be done, that's not just enough. So I'd have to say for our organization, business continuity is important because, uh, so let's assume I'm a financial institution. I gave an example earlier of a bank. Um, so why does a bank need business continuity? So if I am a bank CEO, I would say business continuity is important because uh, the financial industry is very interconnected and uh, people are very sensitive and conscious about their money. We owe it to them to make, to give them the comfort at that all points in time that their money is safe with us. If there was downtime when we are able, to, unable to have people access their money, certainly it will create concern. And that concern may not be uh, restricted just to us as an organization. It could actually extend even to other banks and financial organizations. In fact, as a real example, I'm diverging now from my comments on the policy. As a real example, I actually landed in a city at about 1 a.m., going to my hotel, and I see a long line in front of an ATM at 1 a.m. in the morning. Now, why would you have a long line in front of an ATM at 1 a.m. in the morning? Certainly something happened yesterday. Next day, I read in the paper that there was a liquidity concern, a run on another bank in another country. And people, someone in that country must have told someone and people said, oh, if that bank has a problem, let me go get my money from my bank, which has nothing to do with it. So banks are very interconnected and that's a very important reason to do BCM. I owe it not just to my customers, I owe it to all my fellow banks that because of my disruption, it shouldn't be that I go create a problem for others. Uh, but what's in it for me, my reputation, if I don't give out money, then people will stop depositing money with me. They'll say this bank just is bad intentioned or this bank is bankrupt. They don't have the money. If I give them my money, my money is gone. So um, eventually you'll have no customers and the bank will close. Um, ATMs, I mean, would you want to deal with a bank where you can't get your money from the ATM? The ATM is constantly down. Would you want to deal with a bank where you need to make an urgent transaction and internet banking is always down? Uh, I have a real example of a bank which to, to date does not have electronic banking. By mistake, I opened an account. Uh, frustrating, I'm now closing the account. I mean, who can live today's date without internet banking, especially even more so in a COVID-19 environment. Okay. So in the policy, please specify all reasons why your organization cannot have downtime and the implications of downtime, financial implications, non-financial implications, non-financial reputation, et cetera, financial implications, fines, penalties. We spoke earlier briefly about treasury. What happens if your trading system is down for say about half an hour? Uh, treasury is huge transactions, they're mega bucks and rates fluctuate. Half an hour earlier, I was getting a great rate. I was down, your system did not allow me to do the transaction. Now the rate has increased 20%. Bank, you pay me, you cause my loss. So there could be real fines, real penalties. Uh, Saudi, for example, has, I believe, a regulation that uh, a, a trading entity cannot be down for more than 45 minutes. Trading in Saudi, I mean, it has to, you have to restore within 45 minutes. If you're a class B broker, I believe, and if you're a class A, probably even 30 minutes. So that's pretty stringent. Why? Because otherwise you're letting down your customers. So a good policy must specify what you want, why you want it. The policy should specify how you want it to be done should mention the committees, the people involved uh, who are given the responsibility and authority to make this happen. You may want to mention the steps involved. We will do a BI, we will do a risk assessment. We will follow the two to three run standard. We will follow the SAMA standard. We will follow the SEMA standard as the case may be. Uh, governance uh, reviews that periodically we should really look at it and see that everything is okay. And I would very strongly suggest you put one statement, which I very often do, do not see in a policy. And I believe uh, in my suggestion, you should actually make a statement in the policy. And by you means uh, you're creating it, but uh, you're not necessarily signing it. Probably the CEO or the board is signing it. The statement I'd like to see there is to say that BCM is the responsibility of each and every operating unit, be it a staff function or a line function. 
each unit is responsible for their restart of operations within reasonable timelines in the event of a disruption each unit should also be do their best to ensure that they minimize the possibilities of a disruption in within for their operations and business continuity is therefore the responsibility of each department head we have a central team the role of the central team is to assist the departments in putting in place strong and robust business continuity the central team are the subject matter experts they are here to guide and help you but the ownership and responsibility for business continuity is that of each and every unit and their manager and i would further go on to say that i expect each operating unit to confirm to me supposing i'm doing it but for the first time as a project for the first time i may say i would like each and every operating unit to confirm to me in the next 6 months that they have built their business continuity plans as per recognized agreed methodology and that they have conducted their initial level of testing i may even put in place that deadline and that timeline what happens if you do this uh suddenly each unit now is running after the bcm head so that the bcm head can help them and they can quickly get their job done and keep the boss happy and if you don't write that each unit ignores the requests of the bcm head and everything else to to help put in place bcm so i i think this one statement can actually total totally change the thing on its head and make sure that each operating department accepts its own responsibility rather than dumping everything on the bcm team that's my suggestion so in policy uh, we we are stating what we need we being management why they need it how it's to be done so i moving forward to the next slide i hope this is covered scope what do we mean by scope coverage what's in what's out we will do bcm in this area we will not do bcm in this area okay. um so that's what scope means and uh, an example uh, that i give in my uh, lessons and my courses and the consulting that we do uh, let's take a really large airline and let me take emirates simply because i admire it it's it's a fantastic airline let's say you have to implement business continuity in emirates airlines now i think emirates airlines has decent bcm already but let's assume you're doing it for the first time um emirates probably operates in about 100 countries i'm just guessing that number uh worldwide so what does it take to implement bcm in this worldwide <coughs> uh worldwide uh, i would say um kind of map uh, or or location across the world um easy to do how long would it take so throw me a number um and in the interest of time i may not wait for your response but literally if you had to good implement good bcm in each and every location in the 100 Uh, locations across the world and that's just the countries in each country they may have multiple locations they could have an airport a terminal office city office cargo freight etc how long i'm just throwing you a number i'd say 5 years yeah, i could be wrong like i could be right so let's say you start this 5 year program uh, do you, what do you think are your chances of success and things going very very well almost certainly people will lose interest we're going to say this is too long waste of time effort and kind of while you are doing it things change and you are back to square one so generally keeping a large scope is not a good idea uh, if you would do that i do this i would say choose a small hub and spoke kind of thing maybe some organizations start only with the head office uh, let's get because that's the nerve center that's where the big decisions are taken that's kind of where even a crisis has to be managed from so that could be perhaps one small scope or slightly wider let's take a city in that city let's do everything let's do the city office let's do cargo everything so that could be a small pilot that we've done one of everything we'll expand it further to others uh, let's take a region we can take those decisions but critically uh, take a manageable scope and my suggestion would be take a scope that you can do in approximately 6 months maybe maximum 6 to 8 months but ideally within a year certainly i think that gives you uh, an adequate uh, ability to demonstrate progress to do a good job to complete it and to do it well and once you've done that then there's a lot that you can do with success uh, demonstrated success behind you but if you take on something too large to bite to to chew 
uh, then literally you will fail. And if you fail, the whole project goes for a six. And of course, it's not a great feeling for you also. So scope is important. Scope helps actually manageable scope helps keep things tight on track and be able to get you success. Exclusions, there will be exclusions. Whatever is, is excluded is not part of the BCM project. Therefore, someone else needs to deal with it. Who? Let the department head, head deal with it. Let maybe senior management deal with it. So it's good to say for anything that's not in this, so-and-so is the right person. Good to define that so that there's absolute lack of, that there's absolute uh, lack of confusion, total clarity. Uh, if you're in scope, I go to so-and-so. If I'm not in scope, I go to so-and-so. Outsourced activities, anything that is done by the organization which is involved in the service delivery is included. It really doesn't matter whether it's being done in-house or outside. If it's a critical part of your process that without that your process will stop, then it has to be included. So in the policy, I would also include a very important statement, which often I don't find. In the policy, I would also include a statement that the scope of our BCM program also includes all outsource activities, which are part of providing us our urgent and time sensitive products and services. And all suppliers to our organization are automatically expected to fully comply to our BCM program. So just make a blanket statement. Now the shoes on the, the ball is in their court. It's for them to make sure that they are compliant. Um, I would say just make that blanket statement and then you can go one and one and figure out which are the critical ones and make sure that they are actually are in a position to provide you the service delivery that they need. Which is why, as I said, um, when I was redoing this, I actually thought that we should start with scope and then actually come to policy because policy will end up including many elements of the scope. Governance, which teams do we have to put in place? Uh, who's the right level that should approve things? What is to be approved? When is to be, to, to be approved? Um, how do we keep reviewing? How do we make sure that there are no surprises? If we need to take a do it right the first time approach, um, when do we review? What do we review? My simple answer, so that's what we mean, we mean by governance, governing the project, keeping things on track, ensuring that there is someone keeping their eye on the ball and making sure that things are going the right way, uh, that we are delivering a high quality output, we are delivering a high quality output in time. And therefore, there seem to be right now no showstoppers in terms of us completing the project in time and at the right quality. So governance looks at uh, those aspects. How do you do governance? Ideally review. Uh, where should we have been right now? What's been done so far? Where are we? Are we on track? Not on track. If you're not on track, why? What do we need to change? What do we need to rework? Maybe redo the plans. How do we ensure that we get back on track? And maybe we decide a new track. Okay, bad idea. A good learning here that we should not do this. Okay, let's incorporate the new learning. Let's change the plan. But critically, we now have a new plan that we are now committed to. So it's a good process to make sure that at a frequent basis, we can keep validating that things are okay, keep getting decisions that maybe are stuck, ensure that we don't lose time and ensure that there is no re rework at all. That's the intention of governance. Typically, it's by committees. So who has to approve, who, who wants to be involved? If the board wants to be involved and wants to know what's happening great i mean let's let's get the board to read to keep convening they may need to convene frequently because if they convene typically once in three months that may be too late so that's their call uh, often it may be a more a dedicated smaller team within the organization uh, like a steering committee um, so at what level of what frequency does the steering committee meet say once in two weeks once a month and in in, in that sense and then who are the other people who actually have to play a role in the process. So governance is more the people taking the decisions and, and the approvals and who tell you what's not okay, what's okay, what to change. Um, critically, uh, roles, responsibilities and authorities, which are the various entities who need to play a role, including the governance people. So the first level in this number one, uh, in uh, part D, assigning roles and responsibilities, uh, the first level would be the steering committee itself, top management sponsor steering committee. We've spoken of top management 
<coughs> excuse me typically that's defined as the people who take decisions in the organization uh, the people who run the organization sponsor sponsor is normally the top management representative for the bcm initiative so is e- all the cnm management equally responsible equally spending the time may not make be an efficient way to do it usually one person is nominated and saying you are the sponsor uh, you should spend more time on bcm than the others and you can then refer it to others and and for us for our approval so we don't need to get into level of detail you get into the level of detail that's your core responsibility so normally the sponsor is a cnm admin representative uh, someone who knows the ceo well who can walk into the ceo's office anytime there's an urgent decision or something needed or a show stopper or the project is falling behind the sponsor has the confidence and comfort that he can walk into the ceo's office and get a quick decision because normally the bcm head may not be able to do that so good to nominate a sponsor sponsor is normally the head of the steering committee and sponsor is the one the bcm head goes to when he or she is facing a problem top management is generic could be the board could be the ceo whoever in the organization has to approve decisions and using the party example they are the ones who have to be happy when the bcm is built so if you do all of this and top management is un- unhappy then maybe technically the project work but it's a fail project because your stakeholders are upset what's the point so it's good to keep them uh, in line on track in the loop constantly bcm head and team yes normally you will have a bcm head could be full time or part time uh, doesn't necessarily mean he has to be full time depends on the size of the organization but in general uh, many entities and especially larger ones put in place a full time head um the uh, the full time head may often need some people to support them so the bcm team why to coordinate mostly to coordinate to run around to to follow up on open issues uh, and there'll be many many open issues and uh, very simply if if for example you have to submit a uh, uh, bia to the steering committee for approval consolidation and 10 units have sent their inputs but the 11th has not then you're stuck you can't consolidate because one input is missing so someone needs to chase them go sit with them etc so there's a lot of chasing and follow up and that's why normally the bcm head may need a team along with him department reps coordinators uh, you can't do everything you don't know everything you don't understand everything and you're not expected to understand everything as a bcm head goes back to my statement at the beginning the role of the bcm head is to make the project happen the role of the bcm head and his team is not to do everything for everyone that's the role of everyone else and hopefully your policy has specified that i need every unit to own their bcm and do what's necessary to put in place if you need help contact the bcm team their job is to help you do it and to advise you and to guide you <coughs> but their job is not to sit down and do everything for you so it's best done by putting coordinators and representatives and they are for the bcm team they represent the department for the rep- department they represent the needs and expectations of the bcm team critical role that's why as i said in the beginning we normally ask when we do our consulting we say give us your best person for the bcm initiative someone who knows it all someone who can do it all someone who others will listen to if he tells his department people that look i need this by tomorrow then he is senior and respected enough for them to do it for him either due to their official relationship or even due to the personal relationship but he is a person who you can rely on to get the job done in time at high quality once the plans are ready you may need to know who will actually implement them so who will be the responders the recovery personnel strictly speaking you don't need this yet you may need this a bit later few months down the road but ultimately it will need to be defined and there could be specialized roles for example disaster recovery the it part audit communications uh, many of these are quite specialized maybe procurement in terms of a supplier outsourcing contracts and the bcm element there so all of these would need to know that we have an initiative and all personnel everyone okay as someone who doesn't have a direct role 1 to 5 i am in category 6 i don't have a direct role to play do i still need to know that there is something called business continuity yes i need to know what is bcm why it adds value i need to know why because you want me to fully support it with my heart and soul not just because i was told to do it not not lip service so it's good for me to understand 
So I need the understanding. I need the embedding. What do you expect me to do in a real situation if I don't have a real role to play? At the very minimum, I should be your eyes and ears. At the very minimum, I should come and say, "Hey, I've got an idea. Why don't you think about it? Maybe I should come and say, 'Look, there's this briefcase sitting out there, uh, which in the reception for three hours. And I mean, is there a bomb in it? I should know who to tell. Uh, maybe there's a particular disruption that's happening or about to happen, which has come to my notice. Who do I inform? So even if I don't have a direct role to play, I still have a role in terms of supporting your BCMS evacuation." call tree assembly point reporting to my manager keeping in touch there are many things that you need me to know uh, even if i am category 6 so these are some of the critical roles and what is expected of them in a bcm situation we have about 20 minutes to go so i look to wind up the rest in about 5 minutes and then we'll keep a bit of time for questions so hit me with any questions if you like Uh, documentation comprises framework documents evidence of intent and records evidence of effectiveness what are framework documents uh, framework documents are documents where you tell me what is expected so we may call it the skeleton uh, it's the skeleton it's it's this is how we will conduct the bia the bcm policy is a framework document the uh, roles and responsibilities interested parties um my my plan template these are all examples of framework documents how we will what my plan comprises what are the headings what has to go there a bcm manual would be a framework document uh, roles and responsibilities who has to do what the committee members all of these are framework documents they help you be clear as to what is intended to be done once the bcm is built and then you have records example of a record exercise record this is the exercise that we conducted on this day this is what was done this is who was involved these are the timelines uh, this is the scenario that we played these are the steps involved this this is what happened during the exercise these are our observations these are our learnings this is how we intend to incorporate the learnings to improve our effectiveness and be better next time so any improvement opportunities anything not great to be improved yes let's be aware let's fix it let's do better next time supposing the exercise went fantastic wonderful excellent 100 on 100 does it mean we can't approve it we can still improve it we can raise the bar next time we can target more we can do it end to end we can do it for longer we can throw in more complexity even something perfect in a small scope can be improved and of course if it wasn't perfect direct improvement opportunities but good to make sure that we record that we keep the evidence and it's good for us to know that we we improved it's good for you to be able to show the management how we improved and it's good for your external auditors financial auditors others to know that this is important to you uh, ultimately bcm is a part of corporate governance management responsibility that management cares and they are doing everything possible to ensure that this continues at a high level at the best possible level key documentation principles you would already have them in your organization i think most of you in your organization would have some strong principles in place typical iso 9000 kind of principles um legibility of the documentation um currency of the documentation not should not be very old should be updated ideally within the last one year keep obsolete versions separate in a different uh, area so that they don't get by mistake picked up standard uh, kind of very common sense principles very often available in in a basic iso 9000 kind of approach and methodology uh, so good to have key principles in place and if you look at documentation i bring through the three information security requirements confidentiality availability uh, and integrity so integrity the contents of the documentation should be reliable and correct so you can rely on it it's 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 a correct document confidentiality should be only available to people who need it like phone numbers and email ids and maybe dates of birth and um confidential information like that uh, no need for it to be available with someone else and availability when you need it it should be available there's no point having it but when you need it it's not there uh, that's one reason why increasingly plans are on handhelds on uh, on the cloud available on your mobile 
uh, maybe even more different technologies, apps, things like that. Um, so in that sense, when you need to know what has to be done, a checklist, a form, it's instantly available and you don't lose time. So that's critical in terms of documentation. <coughs> um, so we're coming to the last part, about 16 minutes left. So again, uh, put in any questions if you like. I'm looking to wind up the session at, at least in this in the next five minutes or so. What more is needed to plan the implementation, budget, timelines, nominating teams, availability, project progress, corrective action. So let's say we've agreed the elements of uh, the initiative. If I go back to the party, we've agreed the various elements that have to be brought together. Many of them can be built on their own. And towards the end, we kind of assemble them collectively. So it becomes one combined, smoothly functioning initiative end to end. But let's agree the budget. Let's make sure we have the funds and the authority. We know how many funds are there so we don't overspend or we don't spend something wrong too much on one stage and be, then be left with nothing left for the rest. So let's be clear on what we need and get the budget approved. And if there are budget challenges, then we need to readjust our project plan. Maybe agree what is to be dropped because you can't perhaps do the same amount if you don't have the, the needed funds. Timelines end-to-end -end and milestones, including milestones for review and sign-off. Sign-off is a very critical process in a BCM program. So let's say um, I haven't, if I don't have sign-off, then how do I know, even know that the organization is committed to what has been agreed? It can change tomorrow. They can say, no, no, don't do this, don't do that. But I've already done this. I proceeded, but we didn't approve it. Why did you go ahead? So you lose time, you lose effort. It's frustrating. You have to go back and redo things. And it's double work. What's the point? So quite critically, it's important to get sign off before going to the next stage. It can, makes you comfortable that everyone uh, all who need to uh, agree and support it have done so. You have their written approval. And later, if they change, now it's their problem and not yours. Because they gave you the okay, you move forward and then they change their mind. No issues. If, if you need to change even after moving forward, then there must be a good reason. So option A, you say, no, no, I'm not changing. Option B, we agree to change. If something should be changed, better change it now than later. So it's not a bad thing at all. But if you have your sign off, then they are responsible for the delay. They are responsible for the, for the rework and uh, kind of you did all the right things. So no one can blame you. And it's up to them to find the money and the extra time. But if you did not get sign off and you move forward, now you're in hot water because you over exceeded your authority. You were not allowed to go to the next stage. You did it. And you now need to explain. And it's obviously not a nice situation to be in. So very critical to get sign off in my view. And that also comes to the planning process, the committees. Let's assume you have your steering committee meeting every two months and they are the sign off authority. What happens if you don't have the papers ready in time for them to sign off? You miss the date. Okay, date's gone. When do you next get your sign off? Next meeting. When's the next meeting? Two months later. So what happens is due to lack of planning, you just lost two months. So um, not a great thing to do. That's why it's important to come up with this project plan. Who has to approve? When will they be able to give you the approval? When do they meet? And make sure your papers are with them, say two, three days in advance. So and and speak to that the secretary of the who's of that committee to make sure that your papers are in and maybe get an early slot, not the last slot for the day that they run out of time, they overran on something else, and your matter didn't come up at all. So be smart, uh, use your uh, use your charm, and make sure that uh, whatever happens, your BCM initiative gets through on track. If something else fails or falls behind, that's not your problem. So as part of the planning process of implementing the project, budget timelines, the teams, as I, as I mentioned, uh, good to maybe give them um, a personal letter so that they take it seriously. We had a customer that wrote to about 300 suppliers and said, we are implementing business continuity. You need to be part of it. You need to fully support it. We expect you to meet our full standards. Otherwise, we will not be able to deal with you on a long-term basis. So that's a strong message to give. Um, and, and interestingly, many of those suppliers rose to the occasion and submitted some pretty decent plans in some time. 
So uh, good to put all of that in place. Anything and everything that you need to ensure the success of your project, it's good to think of it now and and get approvals and activate it at this at this stage. Let's monitor pro project progress through those periodic meetings and block their diaries. So block them now itself. Every second Tuesday of the month, two to four p.m. Block them in now. So no excuses at that time. Oh, I didn't know. I am not there. I can't do this. So you knew. Okay. And uh, if anything needs to be corrected as a result of those uh, meetings and discussions, then let's correct it. So a good time to fix anything so that it doesn't blow up later. With that, we've covered the six steps. Uh, just a quick recap of the six steps. And uh, I don't note any more questions so far. So either I've been crystal clear or, uh, uh, or uh, you all knew this, um, either case, or uh, uh, perhaps uh, <laughs> you're doing other things at the same time. I hope not. But uh, happy to take any questions. We have about 10 minutes left. Also happy to take any feedback about how this session has gone. So if we need to do any course corrections or anything differently for the next session, we do that. Uh, next time I'll also try to make sure that we show you some formats. So maybe let's take you through a policy. Let's take you through a scope statement. Uh, maybe some roles and responsibilities. So we can try and add some depth next time because it's a slightly shorter agenda. Embedding is not a topic that would take two hours. Uh, so we can add some more documents to give you a flavor of the depth uh, to support some of the thought process that we covered today. So I'll stop for a moment. Thank you. So question from Siva Kumar. Thanks, Siva. I'll just read it out. Does budgeting include the investment of recovery infrastructure? Great point. Um, my answer, uh, Shiva, is, is no, it doesn't. And the reason I'm saying that is because I believe you may not have an understanding in very specific terms as to what recovery infrastructure is needed. So let's say uh, you approach management and you say, I need uh, $2 million because I need to put in place my infrastructure. I need a recovery site of 100 seats. And he may say, why 2 million? I mean, why 100 seats? So why don't you manage 85? The answer is at this clue, you don't have any idea at all of how many seats you need. So essentially, uh, you just don't have the information of what you need. Uh, I don't believe you will have the information of how much, how much it will cost. You may not have an idea of any alternatives. So if you try to budget for that at this stage, I think you'll just get beaten up and they'll throw you out and say, come back when you are clear because at this stage you aren't. So my suggestion at this stage, only at least secure the resources for the project team to operate and deliver their activities of keeping the project on track and uh, at this stage i would say don't try to budget for recovery infrastructure or resources needed to put in place the solutions typically that's done in module 4 design because that's when you know what's needed and that's when you know what you have and what you don't have and then accordingly depending on what you have and what you don't have and the gap of what's required you can then figure out what the the capacity is what the investment is, it's outsourced, it's leased, it's bought, uh, various different decisions that you may take at that point in time. And remember, that stage will come again two, three months later. By that time, things may change. So really, why secure that budget now? Because you don't need it yet. So my suggestion is do that later when you have a better understanding. I hope that answers your question. Pankit, no, you won't get a copy of the deck. Basically, you kind of been through uh, the session. Uh, we may see whether we can provide uh, the recording on a selective basis, but again, that may not happen. I think we may use the recording for some other purposes at this point in time. So I would say at this, at this stage, the thoughts are not clear. So I won't promise you a deck and I won't uh, promise you the recording, but we'll see what we can do. And uh, maybe, maybe as I think about it, uh, we may be able to send, to send out the deck possibly. Maybe not the recording, so I am changing my mind as we speak. <laughs> Simple reason we haven't thought about it and are not clear, but certainly by the time we come to the next session, the next week, our thoughts will be clear. So at this point in time, I would, if I were to answer that, probably there's a good chance we may send out the deck, uh, but maybe not the recording. So I, sorry, I kind of changed my stance as I was thinking through it, but I would think that's kind of the status at this point in time. 
do please subscribe so that you get access to the details of the next session so today we had to call you in to youtube to give you the link because the link gets generated there and then uh, so we called you into zoom uh, the next time what we'll do is we'll since you have we are sure that you've registered on uh, subscribed then we'll just send out the link on the uh, through the subscription so if you've subscribed you'll get the link i look at any other uh, questions uh, rajesh okay so <laughs> so yes you have you are you're right that teams tend to find an option but i think rajesh that pandemic has hugely addressed that issue i think pandemic has made it very very clear that bsm is needed so i don't think the optional thing is there anymore but my concern is still they think it's your problem and not their problem and i believe that will get changed only when management makes a, a, a clear statement to head of departments that bcm is your issue don't expect the bcm deal to deal with deal with it they are only there to help you if you don't want to put your bcm in place don't expect them to do so i think when that strong message goes out uh, management uh, all departments will take it more seriously and as their responsibility and not yours thank you balaji crystal clear thanks a lot i've been doing this for many years and um, i too once was a learner but i think uh, if you do things long enough uh, hopefully uh, you keep improving thanks very much uh, hosen thank you so much uh, glad to hear uh, this was kind of uh, again as i said an experiment doing it for the first time but um, comments seem good so uh, i i am glad that i spent my time i thank you all for your time <laughs> if there was no one on this session uh, we'd have cancelled it so so thanks very much i'm glad uh, yes pankit the deck will be helpful i think as i think about it we will send you the deck not an issue um irfan policy i would say that takes us into the realm of consulting that that we do separately that's a paid service um so you can engage with the team separately uh, you have the numbers and i would say this is more mass learning um which to me is 12 hours of delivery and about 12 hours of preparation of keeping things ready between me and the team so it's quite an effort so uh we want provide more than what we can service but of course we do a lot of things otherwise and uh, if you were to apply for them any of them we'd be delighted delighted but that's not why we are doing this i would say that's a welcome by product um seva okay practical challenge of implementing good point i think i've done some but uh, let me keep that in mind and as we do the other sessions we'll try to also handle that very uh, valid point thanks ashish thank you thanks very much uh, sounds good links and references at farm not now uh, uh, we can try and cover it in the last session as a recap not committing but let me keep in mind so there are two things to be keep kept in mind one is practical examples ongoing and links etc thank you thanks rajesh uh, irfan cbci contact the team separately i think what fq offers is a good option uh, probably they can help you and as i said uh, mostly about 50% to take the fq course they pass with merit which is above 85% so they do pretty well and fq in fact offers you about a mock exam full mock exam of 120 questions with explanation live administered Uh, i think that makes a big difference so contact the team thank you asma appreciate thanks suzan thank you samrat thanks asma hisham uh, what is your inquiry so put your inquiry in again hisham we have 2 minutes so i have time to address it if you put it right away so hisham time is ticking away i have only 1 minute more thanks nisha appreciate no you won't get the recording nisha but you will get the the slides and uh, i need to clean up the slide there were some typos i did it in a bit of a hurry uh, my, so i'll actually clean up the slide slides and send them to you so hisham going going gone one minute left uh, you've said you missed my above inquiry request hisham so you need to tell me your inquiry request one minute going and uh, i think almost up thank you sharad thank you shaiji uh, thanks shusha i am still going to wait one minute more for hisham's question practical case uh, not clear what you are mentioning hisham but no i about 2 hours we may not do a case study i think this is more knowledge dissemination 
So if it's a case study you're looking for, then I think you need to uh, contact the team separately. And that may be a paid session, but I would say this is more knowledge dissemination. Thanks, Prasad, uh, Sweeney, etc. And again, also, please do subscribe so that the notification can come to you next time. Thanks so much. So we are bang on time. With that, I'm going to call this session to an end. And thanks very much. Uh, you made it worth it for me. So I, I, I'm really glad I did this. Take care. Have a good day. God bless. Bye-bye. With that, we'll stop the recording.